everyone, this is Sandra at The Whispering Well. Um, so today's video is going to be an Avebury video. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, my trip to Avebury Stone Circle in Wiltshire um, that I took a couple of days ago with my brother and we also went into the Henge shop there which is an amazing shop so I have a few things to show you as well. So I'd been wanting to go to Avebury for so long. Um, I love stone circles, anything like that, um, burial mounds, everything. I've been to Stonehenge but of course you can't actually go in amongst the stones there um, unfortunately because people started chipping bits out of the stones which is a shame. Um, but at Avebury the the stones are very spaced out, like you have to cross a road in the middle to go from one side of the stones to the other and the village of Avebury is like in the middle of it and there is a pub called the Red Lion which obviously was closed due to um, the Covid restrictions but um, I'd love to go in there because it's um, supposed to be haunted. Um, and looks really cool. I mean, the whole village just is so nice. Um, so we got there really early and we did get a couple of like rain showers, but it wasn't too bad. Um, lots of sheep around. You had to watch you didn't step in sheep poo. <laughs> um, and little lambs as well, which were cute. But the stones, I had to like touch them. I just had to go over and touch them and I said to my brother I said you know what I said it's gonna sound kind of mad but you know like when you go to a different place and it's somewhere you've never been before so it feels strange and you're not quite sure where things are where to go and all of that well this did not feel like that at all this felt like I said the only way to explain it was like coming home, like like my brother and I always go there for, for a walk round, you know, it, it, it just did not feel like somewhere we'd not been before. He said exactly the same thing as me. Um, we're very similar um, and he tends to be in tune with the same type of energies and things as I do. Um, so that was like really amazing and um, just touching the stones and this is going to be really difficult for me to try and describe and not sound mad at the same time but um, when I went up to the stones and just touched them like this and just had my hands on them they just felt nice they just felt like, you know when people talk about tree hugging and they just get hold of the tree and they hug the tree like it's, you know, because it just, um, it is obviously a tree is alive, but it feels like, just feels really nice to do that with this, this living thing. Well, this is kind of what this felt like with the stones. Like I could just sit there and just with my arms kind of around it a bit and just sit there just holding it and the thing was is that I got a really peaceful sensation from that um, there was another one that you, that you could sit on um, my feet were kind of off the ground a bit because I'm short <laughs> um, but when you sat back in it and tilted your head back to the stone and if you shut your eyes, it just felt like so, so peaceful, kind of, almost like you, kind of like you would feel in meditation. Um, and there was another stone that was like that as well, not that you could sit on, but you could kind of go back and put your head back on it. Um, so it was just like such an amazing experience. And we were part way round and my brother said, it's like 
I'm, I've got this thing, he said, saying, take your shoes off, take your shoes off and ground yourself. I said, but it's quite cold. It was like, I don't know, five degrees or something mad, but it did warm up later on. But in the morning when we were there early-ish, um, it was quite cold. Um, and I said, but you can't just walk on, walk on the grass. And there wasn't loads of people around, there were some. And he said, well, if we walk, he said, you should take yours off as well. And I'm like, oh, but it's cold. <laughs> but um, he said, if we walk from this stone to that one over there, and I don't know how far that would have been. A fair way anyway, but not not like, you know, really long. It was like we were here and we could see the stone over there. So probably a few feet or so, or, or a bit more than that, because it took quite a few steps to actually get there. So I said, okay, let's do it then. Let's do the grounding thing. So we took our shoes and socks off, bare feet in the grass. We had to watch out for sheep poo as well. <laughs> and so we were okay there, because the bit where we were didn't actually have much there. It was just grass, really. And you had to watch out for thistles, but we walked from this one stone up to the other um, stone. But in on the way, we kind of stopped. We'd do a few steps, stop, and then do a few more steps and stop. Every time when we stopped, you could feel, myself and my brother could feel warmth on the bottoms of our feet, like coming up. Like, like really warm, not just, oh, I can feel a little bit of warmth. This was like real proper warmth, as if a bit like if you were standing on a floor that had underfloor heating. Seriously, honestly, I swear to you guys, that's what it felt like. And we tried it in one spot and it was like, whoa, whoa, I can really feel the warmth. And then um, we went a little bit further and stopped again. And it was the same again. And it was just like, wow, so cool. And we both said, we need to come back here. Um, there was a couple of other things that happened, but I don't really want to kind of say because um, obviously this, anyone can watch this and I think it might sound a little bit too mad. <laughs> so, but we we said definitely we need to come back. We need to come back there. It was just, I just loved it. I didn't want to leave. And I mean, I love Glastonbury. It's my favourite place. And I always feel really comfortable there. And this was the same. This felt the same as that. Well, maybe not quite the same, but very, very similar. To that so it was just like amazing um, and the hen shop oh if ever you go to Avebury don't miss out on going to the hen shop it's like brilliant yes things are a little bit more pricey but I didn't think they were totally silly the crystals are probably the most expensive um, thing some of them are quite large my brother said, oh, I'm going to have that. I said, what? This huge ammonite, massive it was, like really huge. I said, oh yeah, go on then, 600 pounds. <laughs> he was joking, of course, but my brother loves like ammonites and that type of thing, fossils. So, um, yeah, and, and um, next time we go, hopefully we'll be able to take my elder niece, who's eight, because my brother thinks that um, she'll really like it and it will it will just be interesting with her so plus I will get to treat her to something in the shop of course <laughs> but anyway so obviously we went into the shop well, what we actually did was we went into the shop after we'd gone round half of it my brother said oh let's grab something to eat which we did and go into the shop so we went into the shop and I said Oh my God, I said, I think we should just do this last. Just go and do the other bits and come back. And that's what we did. And we said this to the lady that was serving in the shop, we'll come back and she laughed. She said, that's fine. Because we said to her, um, 
what time do you close? And she said, oh, 5.30. So it's like, great, good, we can come back. But, um, so the first thing I picked up was a t-shirt. Well, I say the first thing I picked up, it took me ages hunting to get the size I wanted because I like t-shirts to be really loose, like this one essentially is a, is too big for me, but I prefer that. I prefer the, the bigger size, even though really it's too big. Um, my mum always moans at me. She always says, oh, you always get a size too big. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> so I was trying to find the size that I wanted and eventually right at the bottom of another pile in a different size, I found the size I wanted. So I got this, so we'll just show you size. The green man. It's a really cool t-shirt, isn't it? I love the green man. This was like, oh, yes. And it, oh, it smells so good as well. It smells like the shop. Um, it was in a plastic packet, obviously I've taken it out. They had other t-shirts in there as well. They had one with three hairs going around. And I was tempted to get that as well, but I didn't be spending too much money. So that was the first thing I got. And I, I really love that. They had two designs of Green Man and I particularly like that one. That's why I went hunting through trying to get the size that I wanted. And so I got that. I got some incense because you can never have enough incense. <laughs> never have too much incense. Plus I'd run out of this one. And I do really like it. And this is the Native Soul Paolo Santo and Copal. Um... And this always reminds me of Glastonbury. It's like the smell of Glastonbury. So I've got two boxes of that. Um, I don't know how much it was. Oh, pound fifty. I mean, that's not bad because sometimes they'll hype their prices up to like £3 a box and things I've seen. So, um, yeah, so I've got two boxes of the Paolo Santo and Copal incense, which everything smells of now. Um, so there was that. I picked up a, ne a necklace and this is from the um, St. Justin line. So it's this is pewter jewellery, so it's not silver, which is totally fine with me. Um, so I got this, I was just really drawn to this one. So this is the Triskel. So it's really nice and shiny and it's quite a thick pendant on there. They had lots of pendants, really nice ones. They had hairs and moons and other symbols and goddess ones. Again, I could have bought more but I thought no, just calm yourself. <laughs> so that was the one I chose and that was £19.50 which, you know, maybe some people might think that's a bit expensive I, I don't I don't really think so because it's it's fair it's a fair fairly weighty piece so that was that was that then I got I only got one book actually because I was trying to look for something that was specifically Avebury and some of it was like walking books and things like that um, so I got this one, which is Avebury, Sun, Moon and Earth Energies, which is definitely the type of thing I was looking for. This was five ninety nine. 99 It's the back. Um, so yeah, and there's like some colour pictures and things inside, but I think this would be like really cool. But I thought, well, it's not a very thick... Um, book and they did have lots of books but um, you know I'd have had to spend ages probably going through them and um, my brother like said oh, I'm going to get this 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 and he was finished like and I thought oh, god I can't be although he's okay but I was like I don't want to be in here too long and be annoying so anyway I've got that book but I've got um another one coming tomorrow from Amazon, another Avery book, um, so that will be really cool 
as well because I really want to like read read into it. Then I got um, a couple of like little figures. I got like a goddess one, and I got a little hair. So I've already got like little hairs. I've got a little tiny metal one that's really heavy that I got from the um, Witchcraft Museum in Cornwall. I've got a little um, blue sort of pottery one uh, that I got in Glastonbury. And so now I thought I'm going to get this one because now I'll have an Avery hair as well. So I got this. So this is the Avery hair, which I thought was cool and it's rustic quite rustic this was about five pounds um, and I thought it'd be nice because then I've got the three so they sit on my um, chalice well um, tea light holder so I've got one that side one that side and this one can kind of go in the middle now so that's my hair and they had several like goddess type figures um, in different poses holding different things but this was the one that I was drawn to and I thought she was really nice so, and you know she's really kind of rustic which I love oh look she's got a stamp on her butt um, look at her hair coming down here and she's like holding this drum with the Triscale on it. She's got some felt on the bottom um, so that you know, she doesn't mark surfaces and stuff. So, and these are like handmade and the same with the hair, but they had like one holding a dish, one holding like a, a bunch of flowers and things, but this was the one I chose, so yeah, it's really, really nice. They had the um, like goddess statues, the ones kind of without the heads, or and just sort of a larger um, size, um, like in proportion, the way the way it was shaped. And I was thinking of getting at one of those until I saw that. So there was that, and the last thing I got was a deck. Well, you know, I couldn't go there and not get one. It's not a tarot deck because the tarot decks were ones I'd either already got or didn't really want. And I'm not going to, I'm being more careful, a bit more selective about what decks I choose, particularly Oracle decks, which this one is. But I've had for years an Oracle deck, which is the Crystal Skull message cards and they're out of print, they've been out of print for a long time and I'd never let that deck go because I I do really love it and it's in a bright, a bright pink box. Anyway, I saw this in the hen shop and had to get it. So this is Wisdom from the Crystal Skulls Oracle Cards. It, as you can see, it's still wrapped because I will do a walkthrough of this, guys. I will do a walkthrough. Um, there are 46 cards in this deck. So that's the front. And this is the back. So you can like pause it and read that if you want to. Yeah. Or I can read it out, I guess. We're on 19 minutes, but it says the call of the skulls. Have you ever felt drawn to crystal skulls? A certain fascination you cannot explain that goes deeper than your love for ordinary crystals. How is it possible that different crystals carved into the shape of skulls of various sizes create such a strong response to them from disgust <laughs> to utter passion? People feel very powerful emotions towards crystal skulls and very few are left untouched by them. If you are drawn to this deck of oracle cards, my guess is that the skulls have got you under their spell. 
Receiving messages from the skulls is a blessing I want to share with everyone. Skulls talk to you, they ignite your own inner knowing, they heal, they clear away what no longer serves you, they help you find your way forward, they support and love you and most importantly they assist you in feeling whole again. Allow them into your life to open you up to messages from other realms, dimensions and beings of light. The crystal skulls are here in service to you and to humanity to help us through our journey on the earth plane. So, yeah, so I will be doing a walkthrough of this. So, that was it guys. Those were the things that I got from the Henge shop. This is the bag that they all came in and it says the Henge shop on the front there. And as you can see, they do have a website and they do have some of their um, items that you can purchase on their website as well. I don't know if they do international shipping or not, but I know um, some items can be uh, purchased from their website. So yeah, so all in all, it was like a brilliant day, brilliant day. And yeah, my brother said we're going to go back soon. So that's brilliant. So I hope everyone's doing well. I hope um, that everyone is still staying safe. I'm sure, um, you know, that you are, that um, as we're starting, as the lockdown here in the UK is easing or, you know, we're coming out of it now and different restrictions are being lifted. So, I mean, going into the hen shop, that was the first time I'd been into a shop that wasn't a grocery store or something for I don't know how long. <laughs> I haven't even been to the uh, normal shops in town yet, so so yeah. So anyway, I will talk to you all soon, I'm sure. I'll be back with some walkthroughs because this crystal skull deck for a start and plus I have a few other decks that are kind of piling up again that I haven't done walkthroughs of yet so I need to get um, cracking with that and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.